up, all you sexy nerds? Grizzly McBee here. And we want to thank you for listening to and watching Nerd of the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. This is episode number 170, Mega Boss. I am joined today by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend. You love him, you hate him, the gray hair and all, Mr. Wildfire One. Hi, everybody. I am Wildfire One, and with us today also is. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> it's Fandom Manics. Maniacs. Maniacs. Close Whatever, enough. No, it's, fa- it's, okay. it's fandom. It's, it's fandom. fandom. In case you were wondering, because uh, she has been so active on our Discord, she has been a mod on our Discord for quite some time, and Fandom is now the newest member of the crew. So give her give her the congratulations down in the chat and wish Yay! her the best of luck dealing with our asses. Yeah. Because everyone else is hard to deal with but me. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like we, me and Grace weren't just bitching about you, like, right before we started <laughs> yeah. recording. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead. Bitch about the Pal World names. But they make you laugh. They make you laugh. <laughs> they make oh, yeah, you yeah. laugh. Yeah, no. So he, the first uh, uh, syndicate thug that he caught, he named it Slave One. <laughs> Isn't that Boba Fett's ship name? Yes. Yes. <laughs> until until it got um, rewritten, Disneyfied. But so yeah, I I named the first human pal syndicate guy Slave One, because that's what he is. He's Slave so the, One. So the next four we caught were Slave Two, Three, Four, and Five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Before we started, they were griping about how well, I'm not really griping. They were commenting about how I named my pals in Pal World, and I th- I think it's hilarious. Go ahead, go ahead and tell them some names, there, Grizz. Since we're on this, well, let's see the uh, um, bull picks, as it were, in in Pal World. Uh, he named it Fire Crotch. Yep. Yep. That's that's always he named uh, oh. One that's a water type, pal, make me squirt, which I'm just like, why? It's a Ignore squirty Pokemon. Pokemon. Let's see, and then there's the uh, cat bat. It's flying pusse. Right, flying pusse. It just seemed right. And, and no, in case you guys are wondering, uh, Power World is not the topic for today's podcast. Yeah, we just kind of we oh, just kind of no, got not. to the, the topic for today is uh, Lord of the Rings, and uh, fandom has been again in my <laughs> ear for years now. Let's do Lord of the Rings. Let's do Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, well, wild. We did, Lord of the Rings, we did wild. Lord of the Rings one back in 2020, but I was like, hey, let's do. I, now that I've re- listened to the books, let's re- let's We've... do a. Book versus movie. We've done so many podcasts that I forgot we did the Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Mm-hmm. We we did Lord of the Rings uh, right after uh, the Desolation of Smaug. God damn it! I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm getting forgetful. That's okay. It's just gonna make this more fun. I, I forgot that we did it until she said the date, and I was like, "Oh yeah, we did do that, didn't we?" <laughs> it's Lord, it, it's like OG nerd stuff is Lord of the Rings. That's well, I, it's like it's a topic you can always go back to. Well, I I, I was like, what? Like I, I I remember you saying it. And I'm like, I think I, I'm pretty sure we did Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, did we? Yeah, and yeah. and mm, well, we're talking Lord of the Rings. We're talking. Um, we're gonna get a little in depth. And well, why don't you start um, with the news? Well, the. Anime movie, The War of the World Here, I'm supposed to be coming out this year sometime. What's it on? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's uh, gonna it's supposed to be on Prime, isn't it? Amazon Prime? I think it's going to be something separate. I think it's going to be a movie. Oh. Uh, it has nothing to do with the Rings of Power, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Which, there's a lot of people out there who hate the Rings of Power. I still haven't seen it. I've heard it's bad. I, uh... We, I think we have decided we refuse to watch it for our own sanity. Yeah, it's actually not bad. Oh, you saw it, Chris? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's actually not bad at all. All right. I, I rather like the backstory too. Well, it's good that at least one person likes it. <laughs> As someone who is very who knows all uh, a lot of the legendarium, it, there's a lot that's like, I'm like, eh. 
<laughs> dying inside. Uh, so it's supposed to come out December 13th, 2024. Okay. Yeah. Um, so 130 minutes long. Okay. Another th thing is Peter Jackson is back doing another movie. Uh, I will talk about more about what that movie will be back will be about in when we get to the main topic. It's called The Hunt for Gollum. Andy Serkis is coming back. From, oh yeah, I heard about that. Uh, yeah. Which, yay. Um. But the Gollum game sucked. So. Yeah. Let's hope. Let's There's, hope it's uh, not like that. Like a RPG type of Stardew Valley Hobbit game that's coming out that I've seen develop in development, which I think will be cute and fun. And then I'll end on this news that uh, last month, at the end of last month, I'm pretty sure, uh, Bren Bre Bernard Hill, uh, who played King Theoden, passed away at 78. Oh, yeah. He yeah. gave one of the best speeches in all of cinema history, in my opinion. He also played Captain Smith in Titanic, so he was part of two blockbuster movies that earned, like, over 11 Oscars. And he's the only actor to ever have done that. Yep. So, Gotta give him credit yeah. for that. So that's some oh, good yeah. news. That's 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 some Lord of the Ring news coming your way, straight from the mouth of fandom. <laughs> Not the mouth of Sauron, the mouth of fandom. The eye of Sauron. I wonder what the mouth of Sauron would feel like. Warm. I'm gonna. How do I leave a Discord call? <laughs> <laughs> Warm. The mouth, of Sa the mouth of Sauron is. Uh, I don't know if you remember at the end of the movie when they're uh, at the Black Gate. The guy on the horse comes out and he has the big creepy smile. Oh, is that the mouth of Sauron? That's the, the mouth of Sauron. He's, uh, not Sauron himself, but he. Yeah, that's just what he's called. Well, if he's got an eye, he's got a mouth. Where's the rest of it? It's there. It's just in the movie. They decided to just go with a big eye. And he actually does have his body back. At this I point. see you. Well, okay. You, Frodo. You wanna... Yeah, start it off. Start us off. Start us off. You're the one that, you're the one that want to get back into this to dig up this old topic. Let's do it. Old topic, my ass. It's always relevant. I'm not Basically. saying it's not relevant, but... Go well, before we jump into that, the, uh, the new Lord of the Rings, the hunt for Gollum, uh, being done by Warner Brothers and it'll come out in yep. 2024. Ah. Well, let's hope they don't fuck it up. See so, yeah, yeah, Warner Brothers. Don't what happened it, with the... Warner Brothers, not Disney, so we're good. Oh, okay. What happened with The Hobbit is uh, the studio did a lot of interference, which Jackson wasn't quite happy with. Okay, well, go ahead and start us off, Phantom. Let's get right in. Let's get to the meat potatoes of this topic. So we'll start with Fellowship. Uh, I'm going to go over some basic differences that are big that every, a lot of people know about. I don't know if you will know about them. Well, and let uh, it be known that fandom probably knows more about The Lord of the Rings than the two of, any the, the other two of us in this call. Like, I've read the books a long time ago. I've, I've watched the movies, and I enjoyed them. But it's been so long that, like, stuff is... I tried is... to get him to sit down with me on a day we both had off and watch the... Movies. Yeah, she, yeah, she's oh, like, somebody. let's watch the director's cut of all these movies. The director's cut is three hours long. That's the only way to watch it. <laughs> uh, I, mind you, I do want to watch the director's cut, but I don't want to do like a marathon where it just wastes a whole fucking day. And I'm, at the end of the day, I'm just like. But yeah, you'll watch anime for fucking a week straight all day, every day. Or Fallout. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say. <laughs> Which, by the way, you know, last episode we didn't talk about one of the things we didn't talk about on the Fallout, and I really want to do. Can you find that number, Grizzly, for the for the Fallout phone number? Because we did it with. And I I I know that J Mac and I were going to do it. We completely forgot because we got so into talking about the series. So I'm going to call that number like I did for the Stranger Things podcast. That number is. 213 213 258 
and it hung up. <laughs> that so that that was the number we didn't get the call last time, for, and I heard it did that, and I really want like, what were they doing to that poor fucker? No oh, clue, but uh, that's the that's the fallout so, number. There's a few differences. Uh, start off with. Uh, Bilbo's birthday party, everything pretty much goes the same, except for there's a few key differences. Pippin is the youngest of the hobbits, um, of the four hobbits. He is 11 at the time of the party. Frodo and Gandalf actually were in on Bilbo disappearing. Hmm. So when Bilbo puts the ring on in the book, Gandalf actually does a puff of smoke in front of him make it like a oh that's right i remember that being in a book yeah he he uh yeah, yeah. like they he wanted to make it look like it was yeah okay go on go on yeah uh so bilbo goes up to the house all the hobbits at first are like going oh that's a cool trick old tr cool trick and then he's like they're like wait where is he <laughs> yeah where'd he go so he's up at the house he's trying to sneak off him and gandalf pretty much have the same conversation you said you'd leave the room the ring to frodo uh, it's my precious, my precious, all that. He, uh, accuses Gandalf for wanting the ring, and Gandalf says no. Gandalf doesn't suspect the ring right away as, uh, the one ring. Yeah, he, he doesn't, he, yeah. He kind of has gone, like, okay, something's weird about this. Like, in the movie, it, it's right away, as soon as he looks at the ring, he's like, he was here, he was there. Almost yeah. automatically. He does say that, but he, um, because he's just trying to be cautious. Yeah. So. Ah. <laughs> Go ahead. Wild messing with shit. Um. <laughs> he has some dwarves, uh, come help him with his stuff, and they take him to to lead him to. That's what Rivendell. Bilbo Baggins hates. Damn it. Because he, um. Had, was always in touch. He was in touch with the dwarves still after the Hobbit and everything. So, they basically escorted him. The ones that were alive, at least. Yeah, well, three died, and then we <laughs> we'll get to what happened to the other ones. Uh. So, Frodo comes home. Gandalf's like, "Okay, keep it. Keep just keep it locked away. Don't mess with it. Keep it secret. And keep it safe." So, seventeen years go by from Bilbo's birthday party to when Frodo actually leaves. And Gandalf will pop in every once in a while, uh, but then his visits become shorter and shorter, and during that 17 years is when he starts going, okay, this probably is the One Ring. So he, he meets Aragorn, and Aragorn, this is what the movie's going to be about, the hunt for Gollum. He asks Aragorn to help him track Gollum and capture him. So after Gollum is released from Mordor, Aragorn catches him in the Dead Marshes and then takes him to Mirkwood, where Legolas is from. And he basically was like, I never want to meet this creature again. <laughs> Orlando Bloom and Onion. <laughs> so Gandalf comes back. He explains everything to Frodo. Um, like the whole thing that we see about the last War of the Last Alliance, Meagle's backstory... And everything. And this is happening during the day. This is not happening at night. Mm -hmm. So Sam is just outside cutting, doing the gardening. Like, He's doing the yard work. But he, then he hears them through the window <laughs> like he does in the movie. He's, That's he, what he does. He's, a, he's his gardener. <laughs> Grizz just has the face of disappointed dad at this point. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. I'm surprised he's not laughing along with me, but go on. Frodo and Gal Frodo and Gandalf and Sam, they combine a plan. Instead of leaving right away, Frodo's like, okay, I want to leave on me and Bilbo's birthday. So Bilbo and him share the same birthday in September. Okay. I think it's like September 21st. Uh, so Frodo, it, the coming of age for Hobbits is 33. Mm -hmm. So he is like in his 50s now. 17 years later. That makes sense. So the age, I think, is Frodo, Sam, Mary, then Pippin. While in the movies, uh, Elijah Wood was obviously the youngest, and then I think it was Dominic Monaghan, then Sean Astin, and uh, Billy Boyd. Okay. So he decides to make it very subtle of how he's going to move. So he sells Bag End to the Sackville Bagginses 
And I'm surprised Bilbo did not feel a disturbance in the force when he did this. Someone, <laughs> someone's that? walking in my house. I can feel it. Because <laughs> the Sackville Bagginses were after Bag End for so long because of how long Bilbo was alive. <laughs> Probably on his birthday. Shoot up in bed in Rivendell and go, what? <laughs> <laughs> so he moves. Frodo, him and Pippin are together on the road, and Mary and Mary takes all of Frodo's stuff to his new little house in Crick Hollow, where he's moving. Air quotes. And Sam and Mary and Pippin run into the Black Riders, and they run into elves, and the elves are basically like that are leaving. Middle Earth, they go. The elves are actually the ones who saved them from the Black Riders. Fuck the Black this Riders, shit, I'm out. The Black Riders are. The Black Rider is like, and we know this Black Rider is an East former Easterling mm -hmm. uh, who got one of the rings. He gets scared off by the elves because it's one against a whole bunch of them leaving to the Grey Haven. Mm -hmm. And this, I forget his name, but. It's a, one of the elves that's leading people, and Sam promises him he won't ever leave Frodo's side, which is true. What he does, well, and then after they're twins, right? They're twins. Yeah, that's why twins. The one character they left out of the movies. Mm -hmm. Well, he was in the movie, but he wasn't. Is Farmer Maggot, and Farmer Maggot is awesome because he tells the not this Nazgul to fuck off. <laughs> Sounds like a farmer. We don't take. They don't take no shit. He is like. Could be Satan himself on their lawn. Get off my lawn, you bastard! The he says the, that the Nazgul is like. I'll give. Have you heard? Seen Baggins? And he's like, No, Baggins is are up in Hobbiton. He goes Baggins left, and he's like, Well, that's not my concern. Get off my property, or I'm gonna send my dogs after you. He even turns down gold from the Nazgul, and so the Nazgul leaves because he's like. If you see, hear from Baggins, I want let me know. He basically so this the Hobbit is like they're like four something four foot four feet tall. Tells this Nazgul who's ginormous and cloaked and and we're riding this spooky animal, looking to fuck off. <laughs> I feel like so, that's gonna be me when I'm at, when when you know I'm tired of shit. Yes, with your all your dogs and telling people to fuck off your property. Yeah. Except for without the dogs. I don't have dogs. I don't do dogs. They'll just have one basset hound to chase them. <laughs> and Farmer Maggot takes them to the ferry so they can get over. And once they cross the ferry, Mary scares the piss out of them because it's nightfall. And Mary's trying to find them going, where are you guys? Why are... So they get, and then they get to Crick Hollow, his little house where there's actually a fifth hobbit. His hmm. name is Fredegar Bolger or Fatty Bolger. And... So the, they all have a bath and st they they have baths and they eat and then Mary says. Wait wait wait! His name is Fatty Bulger. Yes. Fat Fatty Fred Bulger. Yeah, Fredegar Bulger. Right. Okay. Like Big Dick. His last name needs to be Johnson Grizz. Big Dick Johnson. Big Dick Johnson. I don't think that's what Tolkien had in mind, but. Well, you know what? He also did have a sense of humor. You know what? <laughs> Fat. Jesus Christ. Okay, go on. <laughs> You're getting too hung up on the dick. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> so Frodo is like going, okay, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. And Mary and Sam and Pippin and Freddy are, or Fatty are like, yeah, we're going to come with you. Fatty's going to stay here. And Frodo's like, whoa, 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 how did you know about this? And Mary is like, I knew about the ring for a long time. He goes, ha! And Frodo's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Bilbo put the ring on to avoid the Sackville Bagginses one time and Mary was visiting, so he saw him put the ring on. Ah. That's how he kind of figured out, okay, this has to do with that ring. The ring is, so the is next... bad. Yeah. So the next morning, the four of them leave and they head into the old forest where they get attacked by a tree named Old Man Willow because, yeah. Is it like it's uh, the same thing as the ants? Uh, no, uh, this thing is probably, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're ants that have like turned more tree-ish and they're stuck in the ground. Mm. And this old tree basically sucks Mary and Pippin in 
to their um this happens in two towers in the movie um in, into their trunks and so sam and frodo try to light it on uh. fire and then they're like no don't do that put it out or he's gonna crush us and then they hear this voice singing in the distance and they go to the voice for help and it's a guy named tom bombadil which is a whole different rabbit hole that i'm not going down at this moment mm-hmm. <laughs> So he lives in the forest with his wife, Gold, uh, Gold, Ma- Goldberry. He saves them. They stay at his house for a night. And then they go on their way. They end up passing Angbar um, and the tombs, the Barrow Downs, and there's these things called Barrow Whites that are evil ghost-type things. And they kidnap the, bo- kidnap the boys. The boys, the hobbits, the boys. The boys. Um, the boys and Frodo's able to wake up and Frodo is actually much more badass in the books mm-hmm. um, he has some moments in the movies but in the books Frodo literally save, is able to save um, the others by saying yell, singing pop, Tom Bombadil's song and Tom Bombadil shows up out of nowhere and gets rid of the Barrow Whites and this is where just, just sing my song and I'll be there Right. pretty much yeah Grizzly and... you know what song to sing for me to show up one and yep, and I'll be there. You know what? You know what song I have to sing for Grizz to show up? No. It's raining, man. Hallelujah! It's raining, man. <laughs> All right, continue there, fandom. Okay, so this is where they get their daggers, actually, not from in Lothlorien, like in the movies. Mm-hmm. So they finally get to the prancing pony, and. Pippin, again, opens his big mouth. But another thing is there's other hobbits that live in Bree, in the town of Bree. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's other hobbits there. And the innkeeper, Gandalf said to give his, send Frodo a letter, which he never did, saying to leave right away instead of waiting till September. <laughs> so good thing Aragorn was there, or else they would have been screwed. Yeah, Aragorn uh, hiding it, hiding in his cloak in the corner, all D and D style. Yeah, and Aragorn tells them who he is, and you they believe him and stuff. And he um pulls out Narsil. He's carrying the shards of Narsil with him. Mm-hmm. It's not back in Rivendell because Aragorn is wanting to become king from the get go. This is one thing they changed, which I, I there's reasons why they did that for modern audiences, I guess. People like the the angst. I don't want to be king. Well, the reason why he's um king, he wants to be king, is because Elrond pretty much tells him, uh, Arwen is only worthy of marrying the king of Gondor. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much. And he he, he doesn't want to miss a thing. I hate you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You just mad I said it before you did, Chris. I, <laughs> I was waiting for him to sing I don't it. Me I miss you, and I don't wanna I don't miss, wanna miss the <laughs> so, They get they leave Cause even when I dream of you <laughs> this, this way to never do I feel miss And I don't wanna miss <laughs> things. Okay, okay, fan. For real this time, I'm not sorry. Uh, they leave Bree. <laughs> okay, for real, for real, for real this time. Sorry, he's just, he's just. <laughs> I knew he was gonna fucking do that. All right, go ahead, Phantom. Sorry. They everything pretty much happens the same. They leave Bree. Uh, they get to. Uh, a little bit too weather top and they actually see like a f- like lightning and fire happening and that's Gandalf fending off all nine the not all of the Nazgul. Gandalf's all up there like burn it throwing fire at them and fighting them. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. You're cool. <laughs> fuck you. So by the time they get there Gandalf's gone, but they do see like the symbol for him that he put on the door um of Bilbo's house. The giant and the dick hobbit. With balls. Yeah, you wish. Um, no, that's ready. <laughs> uh, and there's so, a great cloak around the dick. They, you the Nazgul, shall not cook. Uh, 
That's why we can't have nice things. I'm sorry, my, my kink are balrogs. If I see a balrog, I get off. Uh. Well, they do have a whip, so... <laughs> well, there you go. Uh. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Daddy um. Balrog. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Frodo actually stands up to the Nazgul. He doesn't just drop his shit like he does in the movie. He puts the ring on. Uh, I think uh, he says something elvish. I can't quite remember. And then he stabs the Nazgul with his sword, with his dagger. In the you almost said dick. I remember that. Yeah, she was gonna. Dick. Yep, yep, I yep. Love... He stabs a Nazgul with his penis. <laughs> Don't want to close my eyes. <laughs> You'll get crushed in the morning. <laughs> uh, and Frodo doesn't pass out. Okay. Uh, he goes for days without, with the poison just going through him. And then yeah. finally he's like going, okay, I'm kind of not feeling like, I'm I'm feeling like crap. So they get, El God, Arwen doesn't God up, damn, Dazgul always fucking poisoning me. That boy ain't right. Two little assholes left there to work and over my business. An elf called Glorfindel comes and, ta and, and helps them. Glorfindel is a badass. He also has fought a Bal Balrog, died, and been brought back, like Gandalf, from the first stage. So he has, like, this angelic light about him that the Nazgul gets scared of. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay. It's too wet. <laughs> so they put Frodo on Roller for Dill's horse. Frodo goes off by himself and they kind of hold off the Nazgul. And then the whole thing at the river happens and Frodo is standing against the Nazgul basically going, come across and get me, bitches. And then the horse flood, the river floods and that's huh? Gandalf and Elrond and then Frodo passes out. He wakes up in Rivendell. He talks to Gandalf. Uh, Gandalf doesn't tell him right away what happens to what happened with Saruman. Um, they meet with Bill. He sees they have a big feast. Uh, Gloin, uh, Gimli's dad is there. It's a feast of elven bread, and that's it. <laughs> they're just eating elven bread. bread. That's all. Yeah, that's all they're eating. It's all they have. <laughs> they're like, you caught us on an off season, so we just have this bread. So, so you know, I I kind of. Explain elven bread like KFC biscuits. It kind of looks like it, you huh? Can survive off of them, but sometimes you want a little more. Sometimes you chip a tooth. I mean, hey, Pippin ain't that horrible. was once okay. <laughs> yeah, no, P Pippin is definitely my spirit animal. We've had one it's... yes. What about second breakfast? Yeah, Thursdays, Forest. Well, well Pippin is your spirit animal. I guess that makes me fucking merry or whatever. Yeah. Because this podcast alone just proves that we're fucking we're we're constantly erupting and erupt. Yes, penis. And I'm saying I'm trying to keep things on track. Yeah. <laughs> um. So there's this monster is is hero is Frodo. Oh, the world is fucked. So does that make make shattered Sam? No, she's that's. Fandom is saying. Oh yeah, okay. So, so... Sh Shattered's gonna be uh, gonna be Gollum. Gollum. Freddy. <laughs> oh yeah, there's Freddy or Bulger too. <laughs> oh, there you go. He can be he can be Big Dick Johnson. No, uh, Wild, you're Bilbo. You're old. You're oh, old Bilbo. Just why would I be Bilbo? I mean, that's <laughs> God damn it. Old and senile. <laughs> God damn it! I think you're right. <laughs> Not senile yet, though. Bitch! Oh, the biggest. I mean, if you had a magic sport. ring that would turn you invisible, you would not fuck with people. He tried to put it on his dick. <laughs> that the ring, it, <laughs> it, it it does grow and shrink to the wearer's size of a finger. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have to get real small. Oh, come on! <laughs> I said, I said, big. <laughs> Let me have this, Grizz. If I didn't know you, I'd say, yeah, you could have it, but... Oh, you... you, you <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know me, you'd say you could have it. Uh, this coming from a recently married man. Yeah. Slut. 
He doesn't got the balls anymore. They've been. Oh, they're 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 there. It's just around his finger now. Yeah, he um. Ball of mantium. Instead of animantium. Your ball thing was. <laughs> I sent you that Amazon link wild to the the nut scrubber, and you didn't want it. No. So during the feast, uh, Gloin and Frodo talk. They kind of talk about Limbus what's going Fred. on with. With Dale and Erebor and how it's been prospering and everything. The next day is uh, the Council of Elrond. And the Council of Elrond wasn't planned. Everyone just kind of showed up on coincidence. Gimli and Gloin were there to find out about what if they had news about Moria. Uh, Boromir showed up because he and his brother both had the same dream and they needed like someone to help interpret it. So Denethor was like, hey... Elrond is pretty smart. Go ask him. Then, every uh, of course, Legolas came to uh, tell Aragorn Gollum had escaped from Mirkwood. <laughs> and then, of course, Gandalf and Frodo and all those guys were there because... So, in... After they explained what the ring is and everything, Gimli wants to know, uh, asks if they can help him figure out what's going on with Moria, because Moria actually was, like, prospering for, like, 30 years, and then, like, for five years, they hadn't heard anything. And so they got concerned. Uh, Gollum, they kind of treated like a pet in Mirkwood, so they would let him out, kind of climb the trees and do his own thing, and then orcs attacked, and then he escaped. So that, and then, like, Elis comes to go, hey, uh... We lost yeah, the dog. That- we lost we lost the dude um what happened Lord? we we kept the door open the dog ran out <laughs> it happens Aramir, uh tells about the dream uh i don't want to find it but it's like has to do with like the sword uh halflings and stuff and go- about gondor it's like a premonition and, yeah and he um aragorn actually he doesn't like scoff at aragorn like he does in the movie Uh, Because Aragorn does agree to uh, take Frodo as far as to, like, Gondor and then, like, split off from the rest of the Fellowship with Barmir to head to Gondor to help out. Okay. Bilbo, actually, he's like, stands up and goes, I'm the one who started this. I will take the ring to Mordor. And Gandalf's like, yeah, that's not a good idea. (laughs) That's not a good idea. And so Bilbo's like, okay, they don't start arguing everyone in the movie uh they do in the movie in the book they don't Frodo just feels like something come take over him and say that he will take the ring like another present which is heavily implied to be uh Erlu Iluvatar the god of Tolkien's world like the big main god did he touch him in an appropriate way no it's just like you feel he was feeling a spirit okay stop being weird and creepy um (laughs) (laughs) uh aragorn and arwen don't arwen never decides to leave they always decide to get married and blah 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 so they get ready to leave after they have the council they stay in rivendell for like a month i mean and for like a month yeah i remember in the book it was they were there for a while yeah bilbo still kind of has his little creepy golem moment uh with the ring and for with frodo so they leave and everything's going okay and then gandalf actually wants to go through moria okay aragorn's the one who doesn't Aragorn took Gollum through Moria from the other side because they could get in that way uh, to get to Mirkwood. Okay. And Ar- Aragorn's like, I don't want to go through there again, but if we have to, okay. <laughs> Moria they sucks. Get, they go up the mountain, snow blocks them, they have to go back. Everyone basically says we'll go through Moria, but Baromir's still like, let's go for the Gap of Rohan. <laughs> still. Yeah, let's not go through Moria. That place is spooky. Uh, let's yeah. Let's just take it to one of the lizard, wizards who wants to uh, kill. Who wants to eat us? Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't cover. Uh, Gandalf explains what happened with Saruman and the Consul- Council of Elrond. How okay. Saruman betrayed them. Uh, 
a, how the eagle saved him, and he actually was taken by the eagle to Rohan, and that and he already noticed that Keen Thaden was fucking weird under yeah under grim uh, worm because of worm spell. tongue. Yeah, worm tongue actually spills the beans to the Nazgul that Saruman does know where the Shire is and does know the Shire, but Saruman was lying, so he was, like, trying to play both sides. Ah. And he has a moment of clarity. He goes up to beg Gandalf for forgiveness to get back on the side, but Gandalf's already gone, and so he's like, fuck it. Oh, too bad. Fuck that shit, I'm not. In Moria, uh, the Watcher in the Water still attacks them. Sam tries to say Frodo and stuff. The they are in there for like twelve days, I think, if I remember correctly. Okay. And Pippin throws a stone down the well, down a well. In the movie, he uh, knocks. Yeah, he, he ends up knocking a, a, a skeleton <laughs> into a well. Who of a took? Uh, which we still get the full took line. Yep. And so that's when we they get to the. Getting to the best part where Gandalf gets turned on by the Balrog. They get to um on the wish dot the... com version of the Lord of the Rings. To where uh Balin is buried. <laughs> and Bal and so Gimli had no idea that he had no idea if it was gonna be safe in Moria like he did in the movie because he or if something had happened. And so... So the movie had that right. Well, he thought something was... He thought it was safe in Moria. Mm. That's why he always was like, let's go ball and we'll give us a great feast. And Gandalf's like, no. Uh, no, you don't want to go there, dude. Trust me. Ori and Owen were two dwarves that were part of the Hobbit were with Balin. Balin dies first. He gets shot by an orc. Or Owen, uh, Gimli's uncle, is killed by the Watcher in the water. Damn. And then Ori is the scribe who... That, that hentai-looking thing that fucking... Re, yeah. Who, re, where Gandalf reads the what happened uh, to them. Hmm. And then, of course, they get attacked uh, with, by the orcs and everything. And so they make their way through, and Gandalf sends them all ahead. And he's doing a shutting spell on the doors. And then he feels a presence on the other side. So Gandalf had no idea it was a Balrog that was Durin's bane. So Gandalf comes flying down the stairs and he's like, I haven't felt magic like that. And so Gimli and Legolas actually see it first. And Gimli yells, Durin's bane, drops his axe, and Legolas identifies it as a Balrog. And so... Cause of Doom pretty much happens the same. The whole shall not you shall not pass thing. Barmir and uh, Aragorn actually try to stand with Gandalf when that happens. Uh, but we all know that didn't work. The fucking Balrog, <laughs> so you know. Yeah, uh, a Balrog is a Maiar, which Gandalf is a Maiar as well, which are like kind of like demigod type things. So that's he was like one of the only people who could have slain that thing. So they leave Mor they leave Moria, they head to Lothlorien. Gollum act actually tries they're up sleeping in the trees uh at night and Gollum actually tries to get up there. <laughs> but uh Well oh, that would have been funny them. to watch. They actually are want to make Gimli cover his eyes, like blindfold him so he doesn't see where the main city of Lothlorien is. Uh so he throws a fit, and then everyone, Aragorn's like, okay, we'll all just cover our eyes. And then Legolas gets upset. So they spend, like, a month in Moria. In, in, not Moria, in Lothlorien. Sounds about right. Recovering. Because uh, the Moria thing was fucking ridiculous, and of course, you know, they lost, they thought they lost Gandalf. Uh, Frodo, uh, Sam, the whole time, was like going, I should have brought rope! And then he finally gets some rope uh, from the elves. And Gladriel gives him a seed to plant in the Shire layer, hmm. which helps. The Shire layer? Uh, the Shire, Shire later. Oh, the Shire, oh, later, okay. Oh, that was like the bat layer? I can enunciate. Oh, okay. Uh, he was, so 
Frodo looks into the mirror of Galadriel, and so does Sam. And Sam almost leaves after seeing what's going on in the mirror of Galadriel. Mm -hmm. But Galadriel stops him, which, good thing he did. She did. Um, He basically sees uh, events that happen at the end of the of Return of the King. Mm-hmm. Aragorn decides, okay, with Gandalf, who was basically the de facto re- leader of the Fellowship, is gone, I have to take over and get Frodo to Mordor. Bar- the whole thing with Baramir pretty much happens the same, but the movie is ends differently than the book. The book ends with Frodo. He's up on Amon Hen, sitting on a throne, and he looks off into the distance. He has the ring on, and he can see Sauron. Sauron has a body in this, and Gollum confirms that because he's missing a finger. Like, mm-hmm. he personally tortured Gollum for information about Bilbo. Um, he's missing a finger. And he hears uh, a voice telling him, like, a gruff voice telling him, Take off the ring, you fool! Take off the ring! Which is Gandalf. Yeah. The white. And that's when he decides he's gonna leave. Sam and everyone, they're all looking for Frodo. It makes sense! Yeah. After he has sex with the with the Balrog, he's Gandalf the White! <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, he... He was the gray! But now he's the white! So... <laughs> Gandalf... Uh, not Gandalf. Sam realizes that Frodo isn't in deeper in the forest. He realizes he's gonna leave. So, Sam... That basically exchange happens the same. Sam tries to swim out to him. Almost drowns. Frodo saves him and goes, I made a promise. Sam goes, I made a promise, Mr. Frodo. I'm not leaving you. And then they go on their way. And That's then, how the book ends. And then the guy who played, what's his name, puts his foot in glass. Oh, yeah. Um, Sean Astin uh, yeah. stepped in glass in the river and yeah. had to go get stitches. <laughs> Someone got fired that day, I'll tell you that much. Because they, um, they were supposed to clear it out because they were walking barefoot. I remember reading yep. about that. Yeah, they had uh, fake feet, prosthetic feet on. Gaul, uh, so yeah, that's how that's basically the end of fellowship. So, is there anything you else you want to say about fellowship fandom? I think it's one of the best, like first books in a trilogy, if not the best. I re- I remember trilogy. reading it um, when I was reading it. I I have one problem with Tolkien's writing is that he'll sit and you've heard. I probably said this last podcast. I probably I've, I've, I know Grizzly's heard me say it. You've heard me say it. He'll sit and he'll just like elongate. The explanation the tree's bark was rugged and it was brown and it wasn't just a normal kind of brown it was like a deep turd brown and it was so brown that it made you want to slap your mama and then after the brownness you see a little bit of green there's a little green there too and then the tree talked to me and in a rugged deep voice like yeah i love his writing but jesus christ it's hard to get through sometimes the uh c.s lewis is Ten times worse with that. Yeah. Yeah. Anne Rice is pretty bad about it too. Yeah, well, Anne, Anne Rice is writing about gay vampires, so. Well, I mean, I don't. Yeah, and his dick was rugged, and and it it curved and slowly it was, to the right. It was brown. <laughs> it was brown. <laughs> like a turd brown with a little bit of green. And for some reason, they grow fangs. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll talk about these little by little. I know Phantom wanted to get into big detail on this, so yeah. With that said and done, guys, we'll go ahead and stop the podcast. You'll you'll hear more about Lord of the Rings from us in the future. There'll be another episode where we do another one and talk about it at great length. You can expect more of this uh, Tolkien madness in the future. Uh, again, Phantom, is there anything else you want to say? Don't watch Rings of Power. <laughs> Unless you want to. But all right, guys, we're on the podcast there. We'll see you next time, guys. Till then, we want you to stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.